Good morning, St. John's. Good morning. Both here and over uh, the internet. Good morning. So wonderful to see you as we celebrate uh, this third Sunday of Easter. And we do have a special guest today. Uh, uh, Noah, we will baptize uh, later in the service, and we're very excited uh, for him and for his family. Uh, we, our worship will begin with hymn number 492, which is Sing Ye Faithful, Sing With Gladness, from the Blue Hymn. Christ is risen. The Lord is with thee. Hallelujah. There is one body and one spirit. There is one hope in God's call to us. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Can't cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. reading from the book of Acts. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God, God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. The word of the Lord. Our psalm for this morning is Psalm 116, verses 1 through 3 and 10 through 17, and you will find it in your program. We will read Psalm 116 in unison. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication, because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I called upon him. The cords of death entangled me, The grip of the grave took hold of me. I came to grief and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray you, save my life. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things he has done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his servants. Lord, I am your servant. I am the servant and the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Alleluia. Our second lesson is a reading from Paul's first epistle to the Corinthians. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. For since his death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being. For as all die in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ, but each in his own order. Christ, the first fruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father, and after he has destroyed every ruler and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. 
The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now on that same day, two of the disciples were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with, him, went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find the body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, 
and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, the Lord is risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I speak in the name of the one God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Today we hear one of the best stories told by the great storyteller, St. Luke, and this tale of the disciples on the road to Emmaus. So this takes place on Sunday morning, Easter Sunday. These two disciples head out to Emmaus. One is named Cleopas. We don't know anything about Cleopas. Cleopas could be any of us. And the other person is unnamed. They travel looking sad. And they encounter Jesus. Only, much like Mary Magdalene, as we heard two weeks ago on Easter Day, uh, they did not recognize Jesus. And they talk with him along the road. And Jesus gets them to explain what they know. They know that Jesus was a prophet, mighty in word and deed. They know that Jesus was crucified and was raised. The tomb is empty. They've heard this report from the angels that he is alive. These disciples have the information that they need, yet they don't know how to interpret it. I think our generation is closer to what they felt in the first century than any since. Because we live in the great information age. If you want to know something, you can look it up. You'll find it. It's not for a lack of information that we suffer. It's for its interpretation. What does it mean? And these disciples don't know what it means. They're sad. And in fact, they even put their hope in the past tense. They said, we had hoped that he would be the one to redeem Israel. I guess not. So as they're walking along the road, Jesus is with them, teaching them the whole way. I have to say, part of me still feels, I wish I had that podcast, you know, just walking with Jesus, hearing all this great stuff about the scriptures and learning. But that's not the point of the story. Luke, in his brilliant storytelling techniques, leaves one of the disciples unnamed. And he does that quite intentionally. Because who is that disciple supposed to be? You, me, we're that disciple walking along the road. And you'll notice that we're not alone because God puts us in each other's way. We're not alone. Cleopas is with us. Who's Cleopas? Cleopas could be anybody. So we're with somebody, but that somebody is just as clueless as we are. <laughs> but we're not alone. And we walk together, and we encounter Jesus all along the way. 
We don't always know it at the time. They didn't know it until they shared this Eucharistic moment together with the blessing and the breaking of the bread, and suddenly they see that it's Jesus. And then they look back and go, Jesus was with us the whole time. The great uh, church father Augustine taught that it is in our memory that we see the movement of God. You know, it is in our memory that we look back and go, oh, God was with us, with, with me at that really important time when it looked like all was lost. God was there. I really needed God. And God was there. So this is an amazing story and one that we can easily put ourselves into. Now, in the book of Acts, as I mentioned last week, Peter is uh, preaching this great sermon on Pentecost Day. And we're going to hear that Pentecost reading at the end of next month, at the Feast of Pentecost. And uh, the Holy Spirit comes pouring out upon the disciples and the apostles. And they're preaching in languages that they don't understand. And the people who witness it go, they're drunk. And Peter has to come up and say, no, they're not drunk. No, there is a mighty gift of the Spirit that is being offered here. And after preaching that sermon that we heard last week, Peter finishes um, with what we hear today. And, and uh, in, in the people who were there, who heard Peter's sermon, they, they, were, they act pretty well, actually. They go, oh, what are we going to do? And Peter says, repent and be baptized and receive the Spirit, the gift of the Spirit. So that gift of the Spirit that I talked about last week, it is being offered in baptism. This is one of the places we encounter the Holy Spirit. Now in just a few minutes, we are going to baptize baby Noah Theodore here. And... What do we do when we baptize? Well, we have a cleansing of sins, right? Baby Noah may have a life I'm unaware of, but there's probably not a lot of crazy sins that are going to be forgiven today. What else happens? We have, uh, we're, we're making uh, Noah also part of the body of Christ, right? Part of the church. And that tends to be what we stress in baptisms. Welcome to the church, Noah. You are one of us, and you are just as important to us as, as I am, as the priest. You have a great role here to play. So that's important, and we should stress that. But there is another piece that we don't always talk about very much, and that is the gift of the Spirit. Because we can say, well, what does... What does Noah really need the Spirit for? You know, he's, he's got a lot of growing up to do. But this gift of the Spirit, this power of God, will be flowing through you, Noah. It is important. It is important. And we're shown that through uh, a wonderful story in Mark. When Jesus is doing all the important Jesus things. You know, he's teaching, he's teaching ethics, he's teaching scripture, he's healing people who need to be healed, and then there are these children that are gathered, and they want to interact with Jesus. And the disciples go, no, no, get those kids out of here. It's like, uh, we, we, Jesus is doing important stuff here. You're distracting him. And Jesus says, no, 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 bring the children to me. And Jesus gathers the children and blesses them. And Jesus says that the kingdom of God is for these children. If they have that same attitude, then that is what they need to have the kingdom of God. Children, even infants, have something to teach us. I've met a lot of smart people in my day. Some of them have PhDs and doctorates uh, in, uh, in ministry. And you can study love and faith and hope your whole life. But if you don't have it, you don't feel it, you don't actually love, then Noah knows more about God than that person. 
Because Noah can smile at his parents, and they know, he knows, that they love him and will care for him. We need to know that God loves us, and God will care for us. We are very precious to God. And it's okay if we wail a little bit <laughs> at that because we reject it sometimes. Sometimes we complain about it. We don't believe it, maybe. But it's nonetheless true that we are given the Spirit of God in our baptisms, and it strengthens us all along the road. So Christ is with us, strengthened by the Spirit. We walk this path of our lives, and we don't do it alone. God puts the saints in our way, all of us, and all of the great clouds of witness, the great uh, cloud of witnesses that are the people who have supported us in our life who are no longer with us here. They're all with us together, spiritually, physically. And we have God and Christ walking along with us. So we celebrate that today. That today is a great day because there is a gift of the Spirit. There is a sealing in it. And whatever happens in Noah's life, he is marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Amen. I'd like to invite the uh, God, parents and godparents. I'd also like to invite um, the young people in our congregation. It's not always easy to see from way back there. So if you'd like to come up and, uh, and sit over here, uh, you're welcome to do that. Right along here or over here, if you like. Who presents this person to be baptized? We present Dorothy. Will you be responsible for seeing that the child you present is brought up in the Christian faith and life? I will, with God's help. Will you, by your prayers and witness, help this child to grow into the full stature of Christ? I will, with God's help. Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? Do you renounce the evil powers of this world who corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Savior? Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? Do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? Let us join with him who is committing himself to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son of our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered and was crucified, was crucified and died in the grave. He descended to the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, and the breaking of the bread, and in the prayers? I will, with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? 
I will with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God and Christ? I will with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will with God's help. Will you cherish the wondrous works of God and protect the beauty and integrity of all creation? I will with God's help. Let us now pray for this person who is to receive the sacrament of new birth. Lord, hear our prayer. Open his heart to your grace and truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill him with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep him in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach him to love others in the power of the spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Bring him to fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns for now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin and to everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who here are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus, Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You did great. Very good. Light the candle. Noah, behold the light of Christ. Amen. Amen. Noah, you are sealed in the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit, you have bestowed upon these your servants the forgiveness of sin and have raised them to the new life of grace. Sustain them, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give them an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift and joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. Amen. Let us welcome the newly baptized. Let us pray together. We receive you into the household of God, confess the faith of Christ crucified, proclaim his resurrection, and share with us in his eternal priesthood. The peace of the risen Lord is always with you. And also with you. Peace. Peace. Great job. Yes, great job. Good morning, church. Good morning. Maybe seated for a few announcements. Uh, first, yesterday was an amazing day, and uh, Letty is going to uh, give the first announcement.
Jim. Thank you, Jim. Uh, Betsy. Anyone else have anything to announce? All right, so next week, um, I will not be here. Uh, I will not be in some sunny coast, though. I will be in the far distant place of Manchester, Connecticut, uh, where I will be leading services and preaching uh, at St. Mary's. Uh, and Father Shaw uh, from St. Mary's will be here uh, with all of you for a week. So we're doing a, a little pulpit swap uh, next week uh, with our friends uh, at St. Mary's. Uh, Scribe to the Lord the honor to his name, bring offerings and come into his courts.
Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, and the calling of Israel to be your people, and your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil, and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we be made acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, Put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, St. John, St. Peter, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us The gifts of God for the people of God. Taste and see how gracious the Lord is.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food for the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ.